I'm building a two trailer tiny house. And as you can see from the stuff behind me here, it's time for a build update. But in this video, we're actually gonna step back and do a video I've been promising to do, where we have a look at how these two trailers join together. So let's check it out. So when I came up with this idea of a two trailer tiny house, I really wanted to create a tiny house that was two smaller trailers that joined together into a single seamless unit. Now, tiny houses with two trailers have been done where two trailers are co-located on site, or uh, two trailers are sort of built permanently on site, or they bring two trailers in, it's mechanically moved into place and sealed up on site. But that for me wasn't a true mobile tiny house on wheels. So the challenge was how do you line up these two multi-ton structures perfectly so that you can connect them or join them up with some walls, a roof and a floor in between. And to make it even harder, they have a fulcrum in the center of them which makes lining them up even more difficult. So the idea I came up with was to join the tow bar of one trailer onto the side of the other trailer and that gave me a datum point that allowed the rest of my join to work. So the first reference that our datum point gave us was the ability to be able to set up the trailers at exactly the same distance every time. So to set up, all I need to do is to set up my main trailer, I then drive my side trailer in, hook the main trailer onto the side and all I have to do is to move this side trailer back or forth until I get these two trailers square. Now because the distance between the front of this trailer and where the tow bar hooks onto the side trailer is a set distance, if I get these square, these two distances where the wall continues on into the side of the side trailer will be exactly the same every time. That means that I can have swinging walls that come out from the front of this main trailer and nest into the side trailer. Now there is the challenge of getting these trailers perfectly square, which is difficult, but it's not too hard to get them pretty close or at least within a couple of degrees. Now, because we're working over such long distances, if the trailers are slightly out a little bit, it only changes the length of these walls a little bit and the deflection or how straight this wall is that lines up marginally. And I've actually allowed for that in the design of how the walls nest into that side trailer. The next thing that our datum point gives us is a height reference. So because the main trailer is hooked onto the side of the side trailer here, it sets the height at which that trailer is going to meet the side trailer here. And because the tow hitch is close to being in line with where my locking pins go into the side trailer here, it sets the height of those locking pins. Now they're not perfectly aligned, but as long as I get these trailers close to level, those pins line up perfectly. Now that's critical because the swinging walls that swing out and nest into this side trailer here have tracks on them that the sliding roof will slide over. So I need those tracks to line up perfectly so the rollers will roll smoothly. Secondly, this gives me a datum point that allows me to level the trailers. With the side trailer leveled and the main trailer hooked onto the side of it, I've got a reference to level it. And all I need to do is to adjust the four legs on this house to level up this main trailer with the datum point that I've got on the side trailer. So the trailers take up an hour to level up and granted that doesn't include site work. That assumes that I've got somewhere solid to put the stands of my house down onto the ground. But once that's done, I can then open up these walls from the main trailer, swing them around where they nest into the side trailer. So when the walls swing around and nest into the side trailer here, there's a large overlap that allows the walls to become weatherproof. And if you see the previous video, I go into a bit more detail about how these overlap. But the important thing to note here is the gap that I've got between the frame on the side trailer and the end of my swinging wall. This is what allows my trailer to be a little bit out of square and the walls either closer or further away from this side trailer. And in fact, if you look now, I've got a larger gap on this side than I do on this side because the trailer is probably slightly out of square. Not only does it allow my trailer to be a little bit out of square, but as the, as the house settles or it moves in wind, it allows the two trailers to move a little independently and the 
the locking pins are housed in nylon bushes so they can move freely without making any noise. With the walls locked into place, the sliding roof can now slide along the tracks that are on top of these walls, out over the walls and nest into the end of the main trailer. So the wall's done, the roof over the top, it's time to put the floor in. Now, I went through countless iterations trying to work out some way to make a floor fold down and not have to manhandle it. I'm not going to go back over that, but the, the, the reality is the best solution was to panelise the floor. It stores in my couch that'll be at the other end of the trailer and then comes down and lowers down in between the uh, two trailers here. Now the panels aren't quite finished yet and they are going to have some wheels on them to make them easier to sort of move through the house without scratching the floor, etc. Uh, but this will give you an idea about how they sit between the trailers. Now the problem with the panels is they're, they're, without the floor covering on even yet, they're, they're pretty heavy. And so I needed some way to be able to get them across this gap and down between the two trailers in a way that A, I can manage by myself, B, I'm not going to be swinging around damaging walls and cabinets in the kitchen. So I've created a floor panel lifter that lifts up, gives me rails to slide the panel down, which I can then push the panels off to the side and then lowers my last panel into place. And the lifter also then has springs on it and then pulls the panels in and locks them in. So the first step is to put the center support in, which supports the floor panels and stops them from bowing. Then we install the rails for the floor panel lifter. With the rails for the lifter installed, I can now lift it up so it's level with the floor. And normally the panels wouldn't be stacked in a pile there, they'd be under the couch, I'm bringing them one at a time. So I'd roll it across the floor, straight onto the rails, down in between the trailers. Now with the panel between the trailers and sitting on the rails, I can lower the lifter down, which will support the panel on both trailers. I can slide it across into place. I'll then lift the lifter back up and do the same with the next two panels. So before I put the last panel on, I'm going to get underneath and put the retaining springs on. And these retaining springs hold the panels down and pull them tight into the main trailer there. And what that does is ensures I get a nice sharp line between the floor and the main trailer and the floor panels because it pulls them up and keeps that gap closed. And I'll hook the spring onto the center panel before I lower it. So that's it, the walls are out, the roof is over and the floor's down, which means these two trailers are now joined up and it's one tiny house. Now, once the lining is on, there's gonna be a little bit more to do with a couple cover pieces that I've got to put on, but other than that, the house is joined up and it's a functional house. So there is one glaring issue here. You might say, but Phil, there's a big ass hole in this trailer and these walls on the main trailer don't actually seal up. And you know what? You'd be spot on. So that leads us to posing the question, how am I actually going to transport these things and keep them sealed up? Now there is a wall still to go on this side trailer here with two doors, but truth be told, it won't be completely weatherproof. And the reality is, it's just a de design constraint of the trailers. I did try to create those walls so they would enclose the end of that trailer. And for the most part, with the exception of one gap down the side there, it kind of does. But the problem is I got to a point where I either had to optimize the walls for how they swing around and nest into this side trailer or optimize the walls for transport. And by far the more important is how this thing is weatherproof when it's set up. You might also ask the question, why did I not put a wall on each trailer so that I could close up the opening on each? And I actually covered this in a previous video, so I'm not gonna go back over it, but in short, there was no sensible way of putting the wall on each trailer without them actually colliding. So I had to stack both into the end of one trailer. So the reality is I'm stuck with this problem of how do I transport the trailers and keep them weatherproof. So what I'm going to do is to make up covers that go over the end of this trailer 
and over the side of this trailer. Now that's not ideal, but we need to remember this is a tiny house. It's designed to be moved, it's not designed for traveling. And to be honest, I don't mind spending half an hour throwing some covers over so that I can keep this weatherproof. But not only that, putting the covers over here is actually gonna help protect the ends of my tiny house from stone chips. And this wall here is actually the front of my house, so I wanna make sure I can keep that pretty clean. Also, I'm probably not gonna be moving these tiny houses in bad weather. And the cool thing about these, because they're so easy to pack up, I can get to the morning of when I'm looking to move the houses and I can decide I don't like the weather and I don't have to pack it up. It's, so it's not an ideal solution and those covers will be a bit of a pain to make, but it's much better than having to try and create two tiny houses that are weatherproof for transport than optimizing, making a great looking house that is weatherproof when it's set up. So there you have it, that's how two trailers become one. It was good to finally show you the process of how those two trailers join together. Now, in reality, the actual setup's gonna be a little bit more involved because there'll be more time spent actually leveling these trailers out. I have to be a bit more careful inside and moving those floor panels around. But as far as moving those walls and swing, sliding over that roof, it really is that simple. The next steps is actually make you guys another video. There's heaps that's been happening on the inside there and I'm pretty excited to show you that. So I'm gonna get around to that. You guys know the drill, don't hate, educate. Comment down below if you see something in this video that can be improved or if you've got any questions about how those things join together. In the meantime, go build cool stuff. I'll see you again soon.